welcome in to the Lady Vol Basketball Fever Podcast, part of Vol Basketball Fever. We're a show dedicated exclusively to talking about the Lady Vols and news around the program. Tune in to hear thoughts and discussions from experts who cover the Lady Vols on a daily basis. Now, here's a new episode of the Lady Vol Basketball Fever Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome in to a special edition here of the Lady Vol Basketball Fever Podcast. I'm joined by a special guest, none other than Jasmine Powell, who just committed to transfer to Tennessee from Minnesota. Jasmine, thank you so much for agreeing to come on to the podcast with me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I, I'm very stoked to have you on here. Uh, first time I've actually, I think I've interviewed a player. I've interviewed plenty of coaches here on the show. So I'm very excited to have you on as the first uh, player interview of the podcast. So I got to ask here, uh, Jasmine, why Tennessee? What, what made you choose the Lady Vols over some of the other teams that you were considering and looking at? Well, I would say one of the reasons I chose Tennessee was um, because I wanted to be a part of a legendary program. Um, and I feel like Coach Kelly is upholding that standard that um, was put there by Pat Summit. Um, the one thing that stuck out the most to me when I went on my visit was, you know, how welcoming the players were. Um, and I know that Coach Kelly and, and a lot of fans as well, they talk about how um, the team just plays for each other. I thought that was huge because my main goal is to win a national championship. And what better to do that than winning it for your teammates? Um, so that's one thing that really drew me in is the culture there and how fast she was able to just turn that around um, from the previous coaching staff. So um, and just the connection between the, the team and the coaches was really great to see. So you came to visit Tennessee, uh, I guess, a week, week, a week and a half ago at this point, maybe uh, when, when they played uh, Mississippi State. What was that visit like for you? What, what all did you get to do? What did you think of the environment in Thompson Bowling? Yeah, I got to do a lot of stuff. The main thing was eat, <laughs> but um, I did a lot of stuff. I went and saw, you know, the practice gym where they play at. Um, I got to see just a lot of people. Um, I got to do a lot of meetings with, you know, Angie and and Heather and different people who are just surrounding the girls. Um, and it was very important for me to see that and, and just the people that are surrounding the people that you will see every single day um, and the support they have is tremendous um, from the fans to um, the athletic director to even down to the equipment, you know, um, the the support there is just everlasting. And that was something that I would really, really love to see. Okay. I got to ask, you said you did a lot of eating. What did you eat? Did you have a favorite place you got food from while you were here in Knoxville? Uh, we actually went to this place, man, I feel like it was so long ago, <laughs> but uh, we went to this place. I forgot. I think it was our first time trying it, even the coaches, but we got crepes. Uh, so I'm not sure. I have to get back to you on the, the name, but it was really good. We I got like a strawberry and cream with my mom got the same thing, um, but it was with almonds. So um, it was really, really good. So I was like, oh, I think I can, I can stick around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to love the food here in, in East Tennessee. There's a lot of good food uh, here in, in Knoxville, especially. So I think you're really going to enjoy that. Uh, glad you got a taste of that uh, literally while you're here on your trip. <laughs> So when you were here on your visit, you know, I, I assume you got to talk to a lot of the coaches. Uh, was there any, any coach in particular you got to talk to the most? Was it was it Coach Harper? Was it one of the assistants? You know, did you just kind of talk to all of them while you were here? Yeah, I did get to talk to a lot of them. Uh, one thing when I first got there, actually, that struck, like, struck me was that Coach Kelly was there to pick me up from the airport. And I was like, you know, that doesn't really happen a lot, you know that investment to show that, you know, they, they want you, they care about you. And, you know, just showing that to me was just everything going in the right direction for Tennessee. Um, and from there on, I just have gotten to talk to her as much as I want and pick her brain about, you know, the future and um, the vision she has for this team and, and how she plans to, to get there. Um, I think that was huge for me, but also talking to um, the coaching staff as well, because I learned about Coach Sam and her legacy as well with coaching WNBA players like Dana Evans and Chelsea Gray, two players that I absolutely love. So I'm um, just hearing that she has that experience and that um, the expertise to take the take the player and take them to the next level is something that I was interested in as well. Um, and seeing as though Coach Sam is my position coach, that was something that I was definitely all into. 
Yeah, no, I definitely can see that for sure. Uh, you mentioned that Coach Hopper talked about kind of the vision that she has of the program. What what did she share with you in that vision? And what was her message to you in terms of, you know, you know what made you want to come to Tennessee, the, the message that she gave you of how, you know, we could, they could use you in this program? Mm -hmm. One of the things she told me was that she wants to up the pace on the mm -hmm. team. She wants to play faster. And that's something that I thrive in is transition. And already being in the SEC is already a faster pace um, type of game from the Big Ten. But she wants to even play faster. And I was like, you know what? That sounds like something I could participate in because I'm like, <laughs> uh, transition is just my go-to and how I love to play. Um, but really, she was talking about getting someone to come in that will really control the pace um, and take leadership. That's really what she wanted. Um, with Key and Green being out, it, that leadership part was huge. Um, the, the team took a blow with that. And so she, with Key and Green leaving now, it's kind of like she wants um, the team to, to have that leadership aspect, especially from their point guard um, position. And, and that was something that I wanted to be a part of. You know, I want to have the responsibility of, of being that leader um, for a team and um, ultimately leading them to, to win a couple wins. So yeah, you kind of mentioned a couple of things there that I wanted to go back on and, you know, just looking at the stats and just a few things I was able to look at when you committed, you know, it seems like, you know, some of the strengths you have are you dish out a lot of assists, you can hit the three if you need to, but you also mentioned that you like to play in transition. What do you, you know, to the Lady of All fans listening or, or watching this on YouTube, you know, what would you kind of say to them as your, your strengths and what do you bring to this team, you know, heading into next year? I do very well at drawing the defense in and kicking out. Um, I try to pride myself on having a strong presence as a point guard. Um, I think the main goal for me is to um, just have a bigger presence than any point that I could ever score. Um, that, that's huge um, because one of my decisions of going to Tennessee was how I'm surrounded by great players. And that that's the best thing you want for a point guard is to be able to mm -hmm. kick out. You know, you just keep racking up assists. <laughs> so, um, you know, for me, um, it was, you know, getting in the paint and kicking out the ball and also being able to score, being a scoring threat that helped me to be able to um, suck in the defense and kick out for threes and assists and throw up to the big. That's one thing that is really a big strength for me. So I know it had to be talked about because I, I know this is big for Coach Harper, but what about defense? Did she Was she very big on, on preaching defense? And, and I know that's something that you, you probably pride yourself in too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she really talked to me about how she wants to take big steps in her um, in defense and how she wants to plan to pick up full court um, and try to, you know, turn the defense over and try to cause havoc like some of these teams have been doing, um, like Florida, you know, they're picking up full court, things like in that nature that just help to turn the tide a little bit um, during the game when someone is going on a run or even propelling a run. I think that was a big thing that she talked about as well. And that man-to-man -man defense, I mean, mm -hmm. she really loves it and that was prefers to play that man-to-man. -man. Um, and I thrive in man-to-man um, -man as well, just that one-on-one -on -one defense um, and covering for each other because that's what it's all about and communicating. So, yeah. So to go back to something else you'd said, you, you mentioned, you know, wanting to win a national championship and that being something that you're looking for what were you looking for in a new school and, and you know aside from the national championship how did UT fit what you were looking for in your next stop it was really about the culture a lot mm. um, I really wanted going in I really wanted to have a great connection with the coaches um, and I wanted the team to have a great connection with the coaches as well um, that was a big thing for me with leaving Minnesota um, so going into a culture that is um, just like a family atmosphere. That was huge and huge for my mother as well. You know, she's always talking about, you know, leaving her baby somewhere and hoping that they take care of her. So going somewhere that I know I'll be taken care of and that, you know, um, that, that was just huge for me. Did your mom come with you on your visit to Tennessee? Yeah. Yeah. What did she think of the, of everything and, and the coaches and everything? She really spoke highly of them, even, you know, from the day we got there to the day we left. She was just talking about, you know, how she enjoyed talking to them and seeing their vision. And for me and the steps I could take to grow as a player was um, her big thing was player development and seeing, you know, um, how they could take a player like me and elevate my game to the highest level. 
Um, that was a big thing for her. So just hearing them talk about the ways that they already have in their mind of how they could um, start summer workouts and get me training and get me better um, even before the season comes. She was super excited about that. And she was just super excited about, you know, their how they talked about um, just being around the players and, and having an open door policy and, and being a player's coaches, all of them, just player coaches. Um, that was huge for her. Coming to the visit, you know, before obviously committing to the UT, did you know any of the players on Tennessee's roster? I, I know Jordan Walker, you're from Detroit. I know Jordan Walker's from Muskegon, but I know that's also like on the opposite ends of Michigan. So I don't expect you all just know each other from that. But did you know anybody on UT's roster? Yeah, so I knew of Jordan Walker. Um, hmm. I knew back when um, she played in Muskegon. She was Miss Basketball there. I mean, went on to Western, and that's also in Michigan. So I knew all about that. Um, and then I also knew Jordan Horston as well. Um, they used to come when she was in high school and play uh, one of the teams in Michigan, um, Detroit Edison. So I always would go to those games and watch her play. Um, and then obviously I played against her in AAU on all of Ohio. So I knew of her then. Um, but those are the two players that um, I really um, kind of knew before. Well, cool. So you're not coming in here just complete strangers then. You, you at least knew of or knew you know, knew the people. That's That's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> So we know just to kind of get a little bit more behind, you know, just not use a player, but use a person. What would you like to tell Lady of All fans of, of you as a person, you know, interest to personality or just something you want to know is that, hey, this is this is who Jasmine Powell is. Um, I mean, just as a person, I'm a pretty outgoing and fun person. Um, I think that's one of the things that my teammates used to always say about me is that, like, I'm just so funny, but. I like to think I'm just <laughs> I'm just average as far as like jokes and stuff, <laughs> but I they're always laughing around me and you know for me I always used to um, use cooking as a way to bond with other people so I cook a lot um, so <laughs> that's one thing about me if you come to my apartment or come to my house like you're gonna get fed so <laughs> that's one thing about me but you know at, on the court I'm a competitor. And I, and I want to win. I'll do whatever it takes to win. And, you know, hearing the words of Coach Kelly, um, I run through a wall for her. So that's great. <laughs> well, I think your teammates and whoever is rooming with you is going to love the fact that you love to cook. Uh, I think that's going to be a big selling point for your teammates yeah. at Knoxville. Is that you love to cook. I don't, I don't think anyone's ever going to be mad living with you. Yeah. Um, well, a quick question. I, I noticed, obviously, on your Twitter handle and here as we're recording this, do you go by Jazz rather, rather than Jasmine? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then, Jazz, thank you so much again for coming on here. Uh, one last thing before we, I get you off here. Do you have a message to lay of all fans? You know, you, now you have this huge fan base. I know you weren't here for the LSU game on Sunday, but I, I was there actually at that game. That was a, a great environment. I'm hoping that in your time here at, in Knoxville that you get to see kind of the the old Lady Vol atmosphere of old because Lady Vols used to be able to attract like 16, 17, 18,000 fans in, in a, in a you know, per home game. And I mean, some of the home games, I'm sure when you get to play here in, in Knoxville, you're going to be blown away by just how huge some of the crowds can be and how passionate the Lady Vol fans are. And I'm sure you probably saw it on Twitter already. I saw your commitment video has already had like, uh, what, almost 20,000 views at this point, like a, a high amount of views. So if you have anything you want to say to Lady Vol fans here, now you're, you're, you're new, your new know, fan base, your new kind of Lady Vol family, um, let it go. Uh, I would just first start off by saying like, thank you for, you know, welcoming me, just um, showing so much love, especially like what you talked about, um, you know, my feed and, and um, how I post it on social media, just all the love that you guys showed me um, and continue to, to show that for the Lady Balls, you know, because I know how big it would be for the Lady Balls to get back to the final four and get back to winning a national championship. And we'll get there. Um, in any shape or form, we're going to get there. So stick with us. <laughs> well, Jazz, thank you so much. It's been truly a pleasure uh, to have you on here as, again, as the first actual player interview I've had on the podcast. So you, you've been fantastic. I'm looking forward to watching you uh, in the Lay Balls, orange and white and blue. So thank you so much for coming on here. Thank you. Thank you.